Now in previous years, my best Android launchers list has been a wee bit unwieldy to say the least. I've usually tried to cram in at least 15 to 20 of the buggers. So this year I decided to be a bit more ruthless. I've gone for a more streamlined approach. So in this roundup, you'll find fewer than 10 of my all time favorite Android launchers. I'm talking the cream of the crop, the meatiest morsels, the swingiest shlongs. Sorry, I'm just getting distracted now. Best Android launchers, go! Now, one of my long-term favorite Android launchers is still that all-time classic, good old Nova. It really is the double-ribbed tickler of the Android launcher world, because if you slap it on your six-inch pocket pal, everyone is guaranteed a good time. Pretty much every aspect of Nova can be meddled about with, from the transitions and the icons to the apps draw and animations. Nova offers impressive gesture control as well, so for instance you can open straight up to specific features when you swipe across an app icon, if you stump up for the premium version that is. And those dynamic notification icons are so bloody clever, you'll wonder why Google hasn't nicked the idea for regular Android yet. Most people will get on absolutely fine with the completely free version of Nova, but there is a premium unlockable version as well for a few pund if you want full fiddling opportunities. And also, unlike a lot of classic Android launchers out there, Nova is still regularly updated by the devs. They still show a good bit of love, so you can expect new features to pop up from time to time, and any bugs that appear are swiftly squashed. Now a launcher that's similar to Nova that I used to absolutely adore is Launcher. And this hasn't been updated in a few years, it's actually gone into legacy now, but there is a new version, Launcher 14. Now this is still in early access, so it is a wee bit buggy and shonky at times, but you can download it from the Google Play Store and give it a good go, and hopefully that'll pop back into my roundup of the best Android launchers in the next year or so. In this past year, I've played with quite a few new Android launchers and haven't really got on with them as well as I'd hoped. Haven't found anything that's really been good enough to uproot some of the classics like Nova. The launcher that I've liked the most, I could actually see myself using on a regular basis, is Storio. It's a pleasingly light launcher, so it feels really nice and nippy when you're zipping around. Here on the main page, by default, you've just got a couple of simple widgets, bit of clock action, you can jump straight into those alarms and of course the battery widget. You can also check out what the weather's going to be like with a quick tap up here. It takes you to weather.com which isn't one of my favourites but hey ho. You can also see what's going on in your Google calendar with a quick tap there. And if you happen to be playing some music on the likes of Spotify you will get a basic media widget popping up on the desktop as well. I would have preferred a bit more control on there though. You can tweak the widget situation by swiping down, although you can't edit the two main widgets on there. You can just add in fresh new ones, like for instance the dedicated Spotify app, a YouTube app, etc., which then pop into view when you do swipe down. You can pin some of your favourite apps to the bottom here, otherwise you do have a very handy universal search, just start typing in anything. You'll be able to find any apps, contacts, you could also search the web. Or alternatively, if you swipe up, you've got all of your apps there neatly packed away into folders. The default organisation is a bit shonky, so I'd recommend spending a few minutes getting everything tucked away into groups that actually make you happy with proper names. And then from the main desktop, you can swipe this away to open up your notes page, otherwise this way to open up your RSS feeds if you want to stay in the know. You've got some other great features chucked in here, like the ability to make all of the icons monochrome, so it's more of a distraction-free experience. So yeah, overall, get on really well with Stario. I think it's satisfying, it's smooth, and it's pretty stylish. But if simple is what you're really after, well, it doesn't get much more straightforward than Niagara, which is still one of my all-time absolute favorite Android launches. It's frankly an absolute banger. A quick glance at Niagara, and you'd swear you weren't even looking at an Android phone at all. It basically cops a squat all over the regular Google desktops, instead presenting a short list of up to eight of your favourite apps. As for the others, well they're tucked away in a clever cascading A to Z index, out of sight and out of mind. It's neat and efficient and it means you're less distracted by time goblin bilge like X or Facebook. And Niagara makes your life easier in lots of other ways as well, so say you're playing a good bit of music or an audiobook, podcast, whatever. Well, you'll spy that some handy media controls will instantly materialize right there on the desktop for fast access. 
Pretty simple stuff, but it allows you to quickly and easily pause and play your music right there on the desktop. Otherwise, skip to the next track or whatever. And of course, you can tap your way right back into that media app. And also you can see here, we've got a new message waiting for us in Gmail. You can check this just by swiping right. Then we can archive it, reply, all kinds of stuff. And likewise, if you swipe right on any of your favorite apps, you can jump straight into some of the most popular features. And if you're a wee bit worried you're gonna lose track of time while you're scrolling through YouTube or social media or whatever, you can actually set a time limit. And then Niagara will either give you a gentle nod or it'll straight up kill that app when the time is up. And back on the main desktops, you can swipe down to access all of your notifications at once. Otherwise, you can also swipe up to pop up a search bar to find any app that you might require. But I've got to say, I really love this cascade and index, especially the haptic feedback it provides. It's a very satisfying full on rumble. And back in the day, the customization options for Niagara were pretty basic to say the least, but they've really improved and expanded over time. So now you've got actual wallpapers on top of basic themes including, oh yes, some geeky anime efforts just when I thought I couldn't love Niagara anymore. But you know, you've got quite a lot of other options that you can choose from. You can also choose your own papers and you can play around with those theme colors. And if you go pro for a one-off fee, you can unlock even more features, including a weather and calendar app, which just sits up there at the top. So yeah, if you're after a minimalist Android launcher that helps to curb distractions, well, Niagara has to be right up there at the very top of your list. I also used to really like the straightforwardly titled Minimalist Launcher, but the devs demand a pretty hefty fee to unlock it these days. 60 British puns, no less, to unlock it for life. Otherwise, you can pay a Roland subscription fee. I mean, it's good, but is it £60 good? I think I'd rather get Niagara and just spend that extra money on booze and pork scratchings. Now, another one of my absolute favourite launchers, and one that's quite similar again to Niagara Launcher, is the Ore Launcher where the O stands for, oh my, isn't this a proper wee f***ing banger? It's a super simple but effective solution. Just stick your favorite essential apps on the front end and hide the rest away from sight. A swipe right will open up the phone book and a swipe left activates the camera, although you can actually change these apps to your own preferred versions in the settings. No ads, no hidden costs, just slap it on your phone, choose a suitably funky wallpaper for it, Anime shenanigans, not mandatory, but certainly recommended. And away you go. If you want to keep things basic, another one of my favorites is AP15. This launcher lists all of your regular apps right there on your desktop. Just their names in plain text, no icons or fancy shenanigans. You can manually change that font as well as each app's color and other attributes. While the size of each app is automatically scaled, so the ones that you tap the most grow bigger than the others and are positioned more prominently. You can banish any apps that you don't use often from the desktop to make sure it doesn't get too cluttered either. And also add in your own background image if you fancy jazzing AP15 up a bit. You also have the option of fully customizing the launcher's rules if you want it to behave differently. And another fantastic choice for anyone who wants to streamline their Android experience is the Kiss Launcher. There's no widgets, no pages, just a search bar, a customizable row of essentials and a column of either recently or frequently accessed apps. As you start typing in that search bar, it'll pop up any contacts or apps that you might be after and just tap what you want. And I've got it set to add the most recently accessed apps to this wee list here. So as you can see, WhatsApp has now popped up there at the bottom. And once you get used to this setup, it's brilliantly intuitive and just ensures you don't get distracted by crap you don't need filling your time. And you've still got some customization options chucked in there, although they are pretty basic compared with Nova. Not too surprising given this app weighs in at well under a megabyte. And KISS is still semi-regularly updated as well, despite the fact that it is basically a decade old at this point. And it's completely free to try out, so definitely give it a go. Now another quite simple, straightforward launcher that I recently tried out and really liked is the Yasan launcher. It's still in early access at the time I shot this video. And the good thing is that means it's completely free to try out, huzzah! Now this time around, instead of a list of your apps, you're presented with a simple box grid of nine of your favorites. But the clever bollocks thing about Yasan is it actually learns your daily habits and then presents you with the apps you're most likely to use at any given point of the day. So for instance, if you like browsing a good bit of OnlyFans in the evenings, that'll be sat there proud as punch once you get back from the daily grind. And of course, your other apps are a mere swipe away in this direction, whereas if you go the other way, you can change your alert and you can also dive straight into the battery settings. 
And yes, you always get a jolly wee mantra up at the top there just to really give you a bit of pep. Hey, it's a new day, guy. Maybe don't drag the noose out of the attic just yet. You can also search for apps, contacts, whatever, with a quick tap of this magnifying glass here. Otherwise, you can also just simply swipe up. And you've got yourself a pretty decent selection of features stuck away in the settings as well. So, for instance, you can hide any apps that you like from either the home screen, the apps tray, or the search bar. Now you can customize the apps drawer to a small degree, turn it into a list rather than a grid, for instance. And also that dashboard, you can even annihilate those greetings if you find they just depress you even more. But yeah, perhaps unsurprisingly, the customization for the main desktop, pretty limited, as you might expect, because it's quite a basic setup. Now, if you happen to have a lot of time, patience, and creative ability, that's a perfect zero out of three for me, then you'll probably absolutely love the tits off of Total Launcher, because this powerful tool essentially allows you to craft your very own launcher from the ground up. You can design your desktops from scratch, complete with your own custom widgets, apps, drawers, whatever. When these devs talk about extreme customization, they're really not pissing about. You can personalize every element here and create something completely original that doesn't look like any other launcher. I myself have absolutely zero creative talent, as you may have noticed through the years. But the good news is that you can download Total Launcher and then download other people's amazing creations instead. There's a fantastic variety out there from a brilliant community which really showcase this launcher's abilities. So yeah, well worth checking out. So that right there, kiddies, is my pick of the very best Android launchers, my personal favourites right now in 2024. And as I say, not that many new ones creeping in because some of the old ones are still absolute bangers and still given a lot of love by the devs. That said, I have missed out some pretty banging launchers from this list, the likes of the Microsoft launcher and the Smart launcher. Still got a lot of love for them, but I thought I'd keep things more succinct, a bit more streamlined this year, so anyone who's new to Android and the world of Android launchers isn't quite as overwhelmed. Anyway, as always, it'd be great to hear your pick of the best Android launchers out there. If there's any I've missed that I should definitely check out, please do slap those in down below. In the meantime, pop subscribe, ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech, and have yourselves a ruddy, wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.